The armored dinosaurs are probably one of the least understood of the great dinosaur groups. This doesn't mean there aren't experts out there discovering all sorts of wildly important data that helps clear up the mess, but these animals are often sidelined for the bigger and SEO certified monstrous theropods and ginormous sauropods. At this point, both of the major lineages, the stegosaurs and ankylosaurs, are full of a good lineup of critters from most of the world and the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. However, there are some big blind spots. One issue revolves around their origins. In recent decades, new offshoot lineages like the parankylosaurs, as well as uniquely bizarre precursors to both stegosaurs and ankylosaurs have been found. Unfortunately, they seem to continue to ask questions rather than answer them. Another issue is stegosaurs and ankylosaurs are mostly known from the northern hemisphere. Some bits and pieces have been reported from southern hemisphere areas, but they all end up being too iffy to really count. Thankfully, some insight into this southern armored gap has been made. There were some weirdo little ankylosaurs in Australia, Antarctica, and the little bit of South America that tried touching tips with the South Pole. One really good stegosaur has been known from Tanzania for over 100 years. Kentrosaurus, but not much else. This has begun to change with the discoveries of the first thyreiform dinosaur found in North Africa, the Moroccan Adratiklet, and the utterly bizarre Ankylosaurian Spicomelis. Was there a secret world of southern hemisphere armored dinosaurs completely different from every other armored dinosaur ever known? The late surviving Scutellosaur-like Jacopil of Patagonia and the axe-tailed Stegoros of Chile seem to suggest as much. Morocco is now one of the biggest fossil hotbeds in the world, both of the marine non-dinosaur and terrestrial dinosaur varieties. The Ouled Abdoun Basin is one huge fossil-producing region of Morocco, and the Atlas Mountains are another. The Middle Atlas region is host to layers of Jurassic to Cretaceous period rocks, which have spilt their treasures of dinosaur bones, eggs, and enormous trackways, some of which walk straight up the side of mountain faces, pushed and faulted upwards from the actions of the earth, cracking like the scales of some giant growing beast. One fresh find from the area is yet another armored dinosaur, and it provides some truly baffling anatomy that will have paleoartists scrambling for interpretations for years to come. In 2024, Omar Zafati, Mustafa Ukaso, Facundo Regueti, Julio Company, Saad Bendrioa, Rodolfe Tabuche, Andre Cherrier and Javier Pereira Subabiola published a paper in the journal Gondwana Research in which they describe a chunk of a stegosaur some of them found eroding out of the Middle Jurassic aged El Merz III formation of the El Merz group in the Bulafa North locality during a 2021 geological mapping expedition south of the town of Bulemain which is in the northern Middle Atlas Mountains of Morocco. Despite the fragmentary nature of the stegosaur, it took a few collecting trips before the whole thing was excavated, field prepared, and returned to the University of Hassan to Casablanca. All told, the stegosaur specimen consists of 9 back vertebrae, 21 dorsal ribs, a possible fibula, and 9 things the authors call dermal elements, or the bony bits that sat within the skin of the animal the plates and spikes of average stegosaurs, or the armor of ankylosaurs. Enough autopomorphic traits were preserved within the animal for the team to describe it as Thyreosaurus atlassicus. The genus name is basically composed of the name for the entire armored dinosaur group, the Thyreophora, with Thyreo from the Greek Thyreos, which is the name for an oblong shield the Greeks used. The specific name just refers to the Atlas Mountains. 
The majority of this critter is not unusual. The preserved parts of the trunk suggest an average stegosaurian torso, with the normal dinosaurian vertebral centra and then the super tall neural arch and spines complete with the rib connectors that bend straight up at a high angle for the ribs to do a sticky outy thing before bending straight down to create one of the widest dinosaurian rib cages. The weirdest part, as in many other armored dinosaurs, is the armor itself. The dermal elements found with the skeleton are big, rounded, rectangular plates that almost look more like pottery shards than stegosaur plates. The authors note these bits of armor have an asymmetrical texture, with one side decorated by small pits and the other etched with a cross-hatched pattern. The dermal elements are also curved rather than straight. This and some other features have been inferred to mean these elements were, as the authors describe, recumbent. This just means they lied down against the body rather than stood erect like stegosaurus plates. In other words, they were more like the keeled osteoderms of ankylosaurs and some stegosaurs rather than the plates and spines of most stegosaurs. Some of these dermal bones have unbroken natural edges, so it's unlikely they would have been giant backplates. To get more data out of these wacky cubic osteoderms, the author team did an histological analysis. That is, they cut thin sections out of the bone, adhered them to microscope slides, polished the bone side, and observed the microscopic anatomy of the bone under the microscope. The histologic samples showed the stegosaur was an adult, or near adult, when it died, as the osteoderms had a non-fibrous texture, which is missing in the osteoderms of non-stegosaurian dinosaurs. The osteoderms were also found to be quite dense overall, with a spongier core, but the bone is mostly thick, trabecular, or spongy bone. Now that the bones are described and dissected, could the authors be certain of what type of stegosaur this thing was? When all of the anatomical traits were tallied up and thrown into the phylogenetic software of the author's choice, along with the already quantified traits of other known stegosaurs, the team found Thyreosaurus most likely placed within the Decenturine group, right between the English Decenturus and Moroccan Adreticlet. Thyreosaurus seems to be mostly related to Decenturus, with the two splitting off from the same node, both of which are sister to Adreticlet. Uh, but of course, this arrangement is the most likely hypothesis for now and is subject to change with future discoveries. Now that its close relatives are known, how can Thyreosaurus be reconstructed? How were those weird osteoderms organized? Uh, since the only thing out of the ordinary here is the armor, many paleoartists are content to reconstruct the majority of the animal's body like its close relatives Decentris and Adreticlet, that is, with a long skinny neck, small beaked noggin, long robust limbs, and a short but elevated tail. After this though, the armor is anyone's guess. There are many possible organizations this thing could take, so let's have a look. The most conventional or conservative look for Thyreosaurus is what paleoartist Connor Ashbridge has produced. He has the usual decenturine plates, which transition into spines from the back of the head to the tip of the tail. The weird dermal elements are here interpreted as simple body osteoderms. As he states in his explanatory post about his work, he's interpreted the plates, red, as large armor osteoderms seen in other stegosaurs, Huyangosaurus being the most famous example, with the largest and most rectangular serving as a highly reduced parascapular spine based on the rectangular base of Gigantspinosaurus' spines. He goes on to say he's not saying this is accurate at all, but that it makes more sense to him as it takes less evolutionary steps to take the body osteoderms which already exist and then make them larger than not only flattening the dorsal plates but greatly broadening them. In other words, since some stegosaurs already had rounded ankylosaur-like osteoderms set in the skin, it would be evolutionarily easier for this lineage of stegosaur just to adapt them to be bigger, rather than evolve pre-existing back plates into ovular osteoderms set in the skin. A second, slightly less conservative take was offered by Cy Marcant, or SLVRHWAK underscore paleo. 
He shows here that Thyreosaurus may have been half and half. These small plates start at the back of the head and then reach their zenith around the shoulder area before quickly shrinking and disappearing, only to make way for a pelvic shield composed of those weird square dermal elements. The tail here is still tipped with a thagomizer. Thyreosaurus has therefore convergently evolved armor over its rear end, like many notosaurs. Psy also offers a third, far less conservative take. This one ditches all of the normal decenturine plates in place of the dermal elements covering the entirety of the back. Occam's razor or parsimony would seem to prefer the most conservative interpretation here since it takes the least amount of evolutionary steps to achieve, but when has that ever stopped animals from evolving in weird ways? The mind of Yoshua Kanupe produced a very interesting take. This thyreosaurus goes more along the lines of Psy's armadillo-esque interpretation with the curvature of the dermal elements not lying flush against the curvature of the body, but upwards as curly pointed back plates sticking out and up. This would ironically make the plates running down the tail more like the spines of many normal stegosaurs. It's also ironically similar to an old, outdated reconstruction of Stegosaurs by Giovanni Caselli for a book by Beverly Halstead, which illustrates the hypothesis that the plates lay flat against the body for protection. The great paleontologist Dr. Bob Bakker had also hypothesized Stegosaurus was able to move its plates at their bases with muscles and tendons, but not to this degree, as the muscles and tendons attaching the plates to the back weren't well developed enough to flop the plates around at all angles. And now that we have many choices of how this animal may have looked when alive, what does it tell us about the bigger picture? Suspiciously, both known North African stegosaurs are from the same time and place, are both comparatively fragmentary, and both belong to the same group of stegosaurs. However, Thyreosaurus and Adotiklet both have enough traits preserved in their remains to separate the two from one another stably, and they both occupy two distinct lineages from the same group, making it unlikely they represent the same animal. These two stegosaurs are advanced. They belong to lineages that are more common in the late Jurassic. Their presence in mid-Jurassic Morocco contrasted against the mid-Jurassic early stegosaurs of Argentina, China, England, and France suggests the advanced stegosaurs had a much earlier history yet to be found. It would mean the early stegosaurs of the mid-Jurassic are simply surviving offshoots of the stegosaur lineage, rather than true ancestors. Or it could mean later stegosaurs evolved relatively rapidly from earlier stegosaurs. The world that Thyreosaurus inhabited wouldn't have looked entirely different from the late Jurassic fauna of the Tendaguru beds or Morrison formation. The dinosaurs were just slightly more primitive versions. Thyreosaurus comes out of the Elmers III formation, one of three Elmers formations as part of the Elmers group. The entire Elmer's group is made up of sediments corresponding to a marine deposit. It's deposited at the same time and in the same region as the Guto formation, with the Elmer's being marine and Guto terrestrial. Atlasaurus comes from the Guto, while dubious remains of sauropods and theropods, the primitive Ankylosaurus picomelus, horseshoe crabs, and Mishima sword crocs come out of the Elmer's. The marine nature of Elmer's might explain the fragmentary nature of the dinosaurs that come out of it. However, it is odd that as many unique and never before seen dinosaurs are coming out of this marine layer that might point to just how fossil stuffed the region is. Only more time will reveal those many possible secrets. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.